Hello, I'm Matthew Jarron, Museum Curator at the University of Dundee, and welcome to the latest in a series of short videos in which I talk about some of the highlights of the University's museum collections. And today we're going to be looking at some of the really interesting early experiments that took place in Dundee into X-rays, and in particular the extraordinary pioneering story of this chap, Dr George Pirri. Now X-rays were first discovered by a physicist called Wilhelm Röntgen in November 1895 in Würzburg, Germany, which of course is now twinned with Dundee, very appropriately. Röntgen was doing experiments using gas evacuation tubes, which were popular devices in the late 19th century. They came in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, and uh, we have many examples in the, the university collections here, and they were used popularly in, in electrical experiments and demonstrations and so on. So Röntgen was doing experiments using one of these tubes, known as a Crookes tube, and he discovered that if he uh, passed a high enough voltage through the tube, it would accelerate the electrons to such a degree that when they hit the anode at the far end of the tube, they generated these, these previously undiscovered rays. And since these were very mysterious and nobody knew anything about them, uh, they became known as X-rays, although in fact at the time they were just as commonly known as Röntgen rays. And what, of course, Röntgen very quickly discovered is that these rays had a remarkable property, which is that they essentially rendered things apparently transparent. Now, the news of this discovery quickly spread around the world. Here in Dundee, the Courier reported it in January 1896. And, um, of course, the leading scientific establishment in Dundee at the time was the university, then University College Dundee. So it's no wonder that some of the professors there quickly took an interest in this new discovery. In particular, the Professor of Physics, J.P. Coonan, and the Professor of Physiology, Edward Weymouth Reed, immediately began to do experiments. Uh, they had their own gas evacuation tubes, of course. Some of the very ones that we have in the collection uh, may have been the ones that they were using for their experiments. And so they began to try out these new X-rays and to see their potential. They started giving demonstrations, they started publishing their work, they produced this lovely book uh, of some of their early x-rays, including various uh, images of animals that probably came from Darcy Thompson's Zoology Museum. Uh, they also started giving uh, public lectures and demonstrations about this, uh, their discoveries, and one of the demonstrations that they gave was to members of the Dundee medical profession because, of course, immediately it was recognised that one of the key uses of this amazing new discovery was um, its applications in medicine, and particularly in, in surgery. But even before they gave that demonstration to the medical profession in Dundee, one local doctor had already recognised uh, the clinical applications of x-rays, and that was Dr George Perry. So Perry was born in 1863 and came from a, a notable Dundee medical family. His father was a physician at Dundee Royal Infirmary uh, and one of his cousins was uh, David Gregg, a very notable surgeon in Dundee. And Perry decided to follow in that family tradition. He went initially to study at St Andrews and then went to take his medical degree at Edinburgh, uh, graduating with first class honours. And he returned to Dundee in 1888 uh, to set up uh, his practice as a doctor uh, with uh, surgery in South Tay Street. But as soon as he heard about these amazing discoveries of Röntgen, he immediately recognised the medical potential and started to uh, gather together the equipment that he needed at Dundee Royal Infirmary in order to be able to experiment. And so the very next year, uh, an electrical department was established at the Royal Infirmary, which uh, Perry kitted out with all the latest kit. And indeed, we have some of his original laboratory equipment in the Medical History Museum today. So you'll see this device uh, here, this spark coil. This is one of the pieces we have. Uh, this is one of his early X-ray tubes. And so Perry became one of the first doctors in the country to be doing X-ray experiments. And he began publishing uh, some of his research uh, in the Edinburgh Medical Journal and various other publications. And while Perry was doing this very serious scientific research, um, X-rays really caught the public imagination. They kind of entered popular culture. And so you see references to them in, in books and magazines. In our x-ray display in the radiology department at Nine Wells, we have a wonderful uh, copy of the Boys' Own Annual, uh, which tells kids how to make their own x-ray machines and test them out. 
and there were popular talks and demonstrations about x-rays as well. So for example in 1896 uh, Reed and Coonan uh, from University College gave uh, one of the Armistead lectures in which they demonstrated uh, their x-ray apparatus and, and talked about some of their research and they did all sorts of crazy demonstrations that clearly you would never do now. So for example uh, they got the Lord Provost up on stage and got him to x-ray his hand. Uh, Reed actually stuck his own head in front of the x-ray machine. And of course this was all very entertaining and jolly good fun and so on, but nobody knew the dangers of what they were doing because of course x-rays were highly radioactive. So though the technology improved over time, uh, this is a, a later photo of the electrical room at DRI from the, the mid-1920s and you can see much more sophisticated apparatus, but the danger of radiation was still there. And Perry first noticed it in his hands. Um, and that was very common because what uh, uh, radiologists would do when they were trying to test out the strength of the x-ray machine was hold up their hand in front of uh, one of these devices. So this is what's called a fluoroscope. So a fluoroscope is kind of early medical imaging device that would show a continuous x-ray image on the monitor. So Perry would hold his hand up in front of this device in order to uh, test out the strength of the x-rays. So over time the cumulative effect of this exposure to radiation gradually took its toll on Perry's hands. Uh, and as he later wrote, about 1920 my hands began to give me trouble. The skin cracked open and it amused my colleagues to see me going about with sticking plaster all over them. Sometimes I would waken at night and find them tingling like fire. Well, in order to try to ease the pain, Perry used this bottle of mustard oil to rub on his hands to try to, to soothe this tingling. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't do any good. Uh, Perry said, I was urged to give up the x-ray work and merely superintend, but I could never bring myself to cause others to take a risk that I would not take myself. And that's very typical of this kind of selfless nature that Perry had. So Perry found he had considerable trouble with his hands. Um, Tumours started breaking out on them. Um, he gradually started to lose bits of his fingers. Um, eventually he had operations to try and see if they could be saved, but they were unsuccessful. And ultimately he had to have both his hands amputated. And typical Perry, always thinking of uh, others and how people could benefit from that, he actually donated one of his hands to the pathology collection at Dundee Royal Infirmary. And we now have that in our pathology collection at Ninewells. So I'm going to show a picture of this. I'm warning you now in case you're squeamish, it's not a pretty sight. So this is Perry's hand in our uh, pathology museum collection. As you can see, there's quite a lot of it missing. And great tumours have broken out on the sides. Okay, safe to look back again. Sorry about that. Pretty disgusting. Um, so that was one of the problems that Perry faced. The other one was with his eyesight. So this is the mask that Perry wore to try to protect his face while he was x-raying. Uh, it's lead lined, uh, but of course there's no lead on the actual goggles themselves. And so Perry ended up losing one eye altogether and most of the sight in the other eye. And of course, ultimately, he had no choice but to retire due to ill health. But the people of Dundee were so grateful to him for this extraordinary self-sacrifice that he'd done throughout his life that they basically clubbed together to raise money for him. And in 1926, uh, there was a public presentation to him. The Lord Provost handed him a cheque for £1,120 and he was given various other gifts as well. And then shortly after that, the Carnegie Hero Fund awarded him their highest prize, a bronze medal. This is the actual medal that his family still have to this day. I'm sorry, it's not a particularly brilliant photograph. Um, and they also gave him an annual pension of £200. Uh, and that enabled Perry to uh, get a house to live out the rest of his days in. Uh, this is the house on uh, Glam's Drive. And Perry sadly died not long after that in 1929, uh, buried in the Western Cemetery. Here's his gravestone. And he was really uh, celebrated for his extraordinary uh, heroism and self-sacrifice throughout his life. Um, and he's not been forgotten. Over the years there have been various tributes paid to him. 
So for example, in 1936, uh, in Hamburg, in Germany, a memorial was erected to celebrate um, all of the amazing pioneers around the world that had given their lives and their health to early X-ray experiments. And Piri is one of the names inscribed on that list. Uh, more recently, when they named the various streets around Nymo's Hospital, uh, it was decided that one of them should be named in honour of George Perry. And just a couple of years ago, as part of the Discovery Walk project uh, in Slessor Gardens, um, George Perry was one of those chosen to be honoured with a plaque uh, as one of the, the notable Dundonians that are celebrated in that project. And I'm pleased to say it was actually me that proposed Piri for that, uh, so I'm delighted that, uh, that that was accepted. And if you come to Nymo's Hospital in the radiology department, we have a permanent display on the history of x-rays showing a lot of Piri's early equipment and also um, sort of changing x-ray technology throughout the age. And Perry is also celebrated in our main permanent display of the Medical History Museum uh, in the medical school itself, outside the main lecture theatre, uh, where we also have uh, some other uh, early X-ray equipment as well. And I think it's particularly appropriate now, as we celebrate the heroism and self-sacrifice of staff of the NHS and other medical and healthcare professionals, that we look back to another Dundee doctor uh, who was willing to sacrifice his own health and well-being for the cause of others. George Perry. That's it for now. Look out for another story coming soon. Bye for now.